I know Fusion's node-based workflow might look intimidating, especially if you're coming from a layer-based program like After Effects, but I promise it's actually quite logical and powerful. In the next few minutes, I'm going to break down the basics of Fusion nodes. I'll show you the different types, how they work, and we'll even build a motion graphic from scratch so you can see them in action. By the end, you'll see that nodes really aren't that scary, and you'll be ready to start creating some awesome effects in no time. Now, let's start with the fundamentals. Each node performs a specific task. There are hundreds of different types, and of course, we won't cover them all. But almost every one of them loosely falls into one of these four broad categories. Nodes that create something. Nodes you apply to something. Nodes that combine things. Nodes that cut things out. For nodes that create something, these are nodes that add some kind of image into your node tree. This could be a media in node that brings in a video or a graphic from your media pool, a background node to create a block of color, or a text plus node to, as you might have guessed, create some text. For nodes, you apply to something. These nodes modify the image you feed into them. This could be a blur node, a color corrector node, or a transform node that changes the size or position. For nodes that combine things, these are your merge nodes. They let you layer different images on top of each other, like combining text over a background. And then nodes that cut things out. These define areas of transparency. You can apply them to an image or even to an effect if you want to limit what part of your image the effect is applied to. Think shapes like polygon or ellipse. Some nodes will fall into more than one category, but this is how they work at a basic level. Now, before we start connecting nodes together, let's take a quick tour of the interface so you know where to find them. First, I want you to go to Workspace, Reset UI Layout, so we're all looking at the same thing. In the edit page, we'll create a new timeline by hitting Command and N and call it Fusion Demo. Then we'll open the Effects panel and under Toolbox, Effects, drag a Fusion composition into your timeline. And with our playhead parked over it, we'll open Fusion. You'll see the node editor here on the bottom half where you'll build your node tree, the inspector where you'll control how each node works, and up top you'll find two viewers. Those work a little differently than you might expect, but can be super handy as you build your composition, but more on that later. For now, we're just going to use one viewer by pressing this icon right here. You can access your nodes in three different ways. A lot of the common ones you'll find in this toolbar beneath your viewer. Eventually, you'll start to recognize which is which by their symbols, but if you hover your mouse over them, you'll get a tooltip showing their names. The second place is the effects panel under tools. They're separated by category, and you can also search for a specific one in the search bar right here. The third way is to bring up the select tool panel, which you access by hitting shift and the space bar on your keyboard and you can search for the node you want there. Even an empty Fusion composition should have one node to start with, which is your media out. Whatever you connect to this will be what you see on the edit page. Around the edge of the node, you'll see different colors and shapes that represent different inputs and outputs. A square represents an output, a triangle represents an input, and the different colors will tell you what type. Let's look at one of the most common nodes you'll use, and that's a merge. We'll drag that into the node editor from the toolbar, and we'll connect it to the media out by clicking and dragging the output to the input, like this. We use this node to combine two things together. Here you see three triangles. Yellow is the background, green is the foreground. So if you use this node to attach two elements, the one that goes into the green foreground input will merge on top of the yellow background input. We'll add a background node, and we'll make it the visual aid red. And we'll add a text plus node and write DaVinci Resolve, and change the color to black. We'll connect the background node to the background input, and the text plus node will connect to the foreground input. In the viewer, you can see the text has been merged on top of the background node. If you select the merge node and press Command and T, you'll see it swaps the foreground and background inputs around. Now you can't see the text because the background node is attached to the foreground input. Let's press that again to swap them back. The blue triangle is the effect mask input, so if you connect a shape to this, you can limit what part of the foreground element will be visible when the merge takes place. So if I add the ellipse node, connect it, and resize it, notice the text is only visible where the ellipse node exists. If you're not sure which input is which, if you hold the Option key while dragging the connection, when you release it, it will give you a list of all the connections and you can select the right one. Also, these inputs and outputs are not in a fixed position. They will move around depending on how you have your nodes placed in the node tree. If I move this node around, you'll see the input position moves to the side that makes the most sense for the connection. You can rename your node by selecting it and pressing F2 on your keyboard. This is especially helpful when you have lots of the same node in your node tree, like several text plus nodes or background nodes. Also, if you want a visual representation of what a node does, right click in an empty space and you can force either all nodes or certain types of nodes to display a thumbnail. You can navigate around the node tree by clicking on your scroll wheel and dragging around. 
and you can zoom in and out by holding Command and scrolling your mouse. OK, we're going to add a few more elements and make a simple motion graphic. Now, this isn't going to win any awards for style, but it will help you get to grips with the basics and show you the flexibility of working with nodes. Let's add a rectangle mask to our node tree and connect it to our background. We're going to resize it a little, and then we're going to animate the height so it reveals the red background node. With the rectangle node selected, let's go to 10 frames on the timeline right here and add a keyframe next to the height control by pressing this little diamond. Then we'll go to frame 0, and in the inspector, we'll change the height to 0, which will add another keyframe automatically. If I play from the start, you'll see an ugly linear animation, but we'll fix that later. Next, I'm going to add another element. If you open up the effects tab, rather than a node, I'm actually going to grab something from the generators section, which you'll find under templates, edit, generators. If I scroll down, you'll see one called paper. Let's drag that into the node editor. At first glance, this looks like a node, but if you look closely, it's actually several nodes stacked on top of each other. These generators are made up of node groups. If I select it and press Command and E, it'll expand the group, so you can see all the different elements that made it. We'll keep it simple for now and hit Command E again to close the group back up. We're going to merge this on top of our red background. One easy way to add a merge node is to drag the output of the thing you want to be the foreground over the output of the thing you want to be the background. This creates a merge with the two elements automatically connected. Now what I want to do is have this paper node fly on screen and cover up the red background, and I want it to be the same size and shape. One of the most powerful things about nodes is you can use the output of a single node as many times as you like. If I take the output of the rectangle, I can use it to mask the merge node as well as the red background. To animate the paper node to fly on, I could use the position controls within the merge, but I'm going to use a transform node for this one. Make sure you have the paper node selected and hit shift and spacebar. Type in transform and select this transform node with XF at the end. When you press add, it will automatically add the node to the node tree and connect it in between the paper node you had selected and the merge node. If you ever do this with the wrong node selected, you can remove it from the flow by holding shift and dragging it out. You can put it back by holding shift, hovering over the connection you want it to be placed between. And when you see the connection show two different colors, you can release it. With this transform, I'm going to resize it to make it a bit smaller. Then I'm going to go to frame 20 and add a keyframe on the center position. Then I'll go back to frame 10 and I'll move it off to the right until it disappears. You can either physically drag it around in the viewer by grabbing these arrows to just move it left and right or up and down, or grab it right in the middle and move around freeform. I'll hit Command Z to undo that and instead click and drag on the X number in the inspector. Play it back from the beginning and you'll see both elements animate on. Now we'll animate the text on from the left. Let's first select the text plus node, move it to the left a little bit, and tweak the line spacing and font size. We can use that same rectangle again to mask the text merge as well. I'll go to frame 30 and add a keyframe to the center control of the merge. Then I'll go back to frame 20 and I'll drag it off to the left until it disappears. Now let's go back to frame 0 and check our work. We're getting there, but I want to add one more element. I'm going to open my media pool. And from my hard drive, I'll drag in this DaVinci Resolve logo. You can find one with a quick Google search if you want to follow along. I'll add this to my node tree, and I'll rename the node so we remember what it is by hitting F2 and typing logo. Now we'll resize it using the merge node controls and position it to the right of our graphic. I want this to fade on while changing from blurry to sharp. Let's add a fade first by using the blend controls of the merge node. Go to frame 40 and add a keyframe to the blend control. Then at frame 30, turn it down to zero. We'll play it back to check our work. OK, now to add some blur. We'll grab a blur node from the toolbar and drag it into the node editor. If you look at the top of the viewer, you'll see it says Media Out 1. So all this time, that's a node we've been looking at. If I zoom in on the node, you'll see little dots underneath. They represent the two viewers, and depending on your setup, you might see a third dot for a client monitor. The second dot is currently lit up to signify that the node is loaded in the second viewer. Let's bring both viewers up again by clicking this icon. You can have any node show up in any viewer by either selecting the node and pressing 1 or 2 on your keyboard, dragging the node you want into a viewer, or pressing those little dots. Now I want you to select the blur node, and before you add it into the flow, turn the blur size all the way up. I want you to add it just before the media out so it blurs everything. With the media out still loaded in viewer 2, Select the merge right before the blur node and load that into viewer 1. Now side by side, you can see what happens to your composition with and without the blur node simultaneously. This can be really handy for troubleshooting issues. Let's go back to just showing viewer 2. 
and we'll move the blur node by holding shift and dragging it. And then we'll add it between the logo and the merge, so only the logo is running through it. At frame 30, add a keyframe to the blur size. And at frame 40, turn it all the way to zero. One last thing, let's make the animations a little nicer. In the top right, we'll open up the spline panel. Drag things around a little if you need to resize your workspace. Now, the panel deserves a whole video of its own, but for now, I want you to select the checkbox for all the nodes we've animated movement on. So that's the transform, the rectangle, and the merge node for our text. Click on an empty part of the spline panel so that it's active, and hit Command A to select all keyframes. Hit S to smooth them out, then hit Command and T to open up the easing controls. And with all the keyframes still selected, crank the ease in number all the way to 100. Now when you play back, you'll see some nice smooth animations. See, nodes aren't so scary after all. They give you a very structured way to build complex effects. And now that you understand the basics, start experimenting and you'll be amazed at what you can create. Of course, Fusion isn't the only part of DaVinci Resolve that uses nodes. Click right here and you'll learn all about how they work on the color page.